Hi, this is Isabella Breda, the editor-in-chief of The Echo, Cal Lutheran's student newspaper. Cal Lutheran announced its plans to resume in-person instruction for the fall 2021 semester earlier this month. Our reporter, Madison Warren, got the chance to connect with the university president and the dean of the College of Arts and Sciences to get insight into what the transition could look like. Welcome, Madison. My name is Madison Morin. I'm a sophomore. I am a communications major with an emphasis in advertising and PR, and I'm a reporter for The Echo. Oh, welcome. So yeah, you did this article about the return to in-person learning in the fall. I was wondering if you'd start off kind of with what were some of the motivating factors to this sort of push to go back to face-to-face? Um, it just seemed like a lot of all my most of my sources were just ready to like go see like my the professors and uh, President Varlata seemed just like ready to see students again. And the other student I interviewed, she was just excited to like come to campus because she was a freshman and also she was at home for this school year. So she was just excited to be at school and like learn the campus and meet people and stuff. So that was kind of their thoughts on excitement about going back to school. Cool. And so, yeah. And something that comes with that is like, everyone's <laughs> eager to return to normal, especially since more people are being vaccinated and everything. Yeah. And in Ventura County, I think there's been around 340,000 doses that have been administered so far. And President Biden did say by the summer, we mm -hmm. should have it open to pretty much everyone. Yeah. I'm wondering what sort of additional safety precautions students might be able to expect in the fall. So President Varlata has talked a lot about how obviously we will be in person, but they're still going to have safety precautions, like obviously making people wear masks and staying socially distanced. So I think the school is just going to try their best to make sure things don't get out of hand and maintaining like a six feet distance and wearing masks and stuff like that. And do you know if there's any chance that the university is going to require anyone to be vaccinated? I know like they require other vaccines. So. Yeah, I asked that and because I was also curious because I was like, well, I haven't gotten the vaccine yet. But um, President Marlotta didn't really give me an answer because she just it seemed like she was just like, well, we don't really know yet. So I'm kind of hoping that it just becomes like one of those things like, you know, how you have to get all like cleared by your doctor and stuff before you come to campus. So I think I'm hoping that it will be hopefully like integrated into that, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. And don't you play a sport? Yeah, I'm on the swim team. And how frequently are you guys getting tested right now? It's like, I think three days before our swim meets and um, maybe like every two weeks or something like that. Is that something that might continue into the fall? Have you heard anything about that? I haven't heard anything about it, but I feel like they will continue or at least do it like maybe once a month or something like that. Okay. But I think it also might depend on if people are vaccinated or not by then. Yeah. And that's something I think everyone's kind of looking out for. It's like we have to get vaccines for things like tuberculosis and mm -hmm. whatever million things. Yeah. Before coming to school. <laughs> and so it wouldn't be that weird to require yeah. Um, I know some people have like the fear of like a vaccine passport, but I think mm -hmm. in a situation where everyone's working and living close together, like a university, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and you already touched on this a little bit, but you said that part of the thing that comes into play with wanting to go back to in person is like people just missing being face to face, like the emotions mm -hmm. behind that. I was wondering if you talk about like how administrators and students are feeling about being able to go back. Um, from who I talked to, they all seemed super excited. I asked um, one of my sources, like how if they like were concerned about going back with like the COVID, obviously, and like people maybe or maybe not getting the vaccine. But they didn't really say that they had any concerns. I think they're mostly just like excited to get back to like normalcy. <laughs> so I think that is kind of like overpowering their concerns kind of. So I think that's good. Yeah. And I think uh, Dean Lavariega Monforti is the one who said like 
it's not going to be a complete return to like pre-pandemic, yeah. but it's going to be somewhat of a return to normal. So. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a good point that she added in there because I was like, yeah, it's good for people to know that it's not going to be completely like normal, but it will be the best they can. Yeah. And did they talk at all about like how our return mid-semester next week is going to play a role in informing what's happening in the fall? Um, I don't remember specifically them saying anything about that, but I also <laughs> am interested to know how that's going to go. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, I know some of the things that were discussed in an article, a different article that came out about the return next week mm -hmm. is the fact that there was an outbreak in the fall yeah um and classes were only being held outdoors at that point i think there was like a couple mm -hmm. lab classes that might have been indoors um and i think it was ryan van omeren who's like the director of emergency operations mm -hmm. who was like that's going to guide how we act when we fully yeah. return in person but i guess is there anything more about like the guiding factors going into it in terms of safety or anything that students should know? I think it's just important for people to know that it's not going to go back to completely normal, like pre-COVID. I think it's also important for people to like maintain socially distancing themselves from others and keeping their masks on and getting the vaccine when it comes available to them. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Madison. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Here's what else you need to know this week. Cal Lutheran will be among the first Los Angeles area universities to resume indoor in-person instruction this spring when it pivots to in-person learning on March 29th. Contributing writer Sam Hossetter has a story. Next thing you need to know this week. The California Dream Network statewide call took place on March 19th and was attended by several California Lutheran University administrators and educators. The call aimed to provide information that will help DACA recipients and other DREAM Act students navigate recent policy changes. Our reporter, Krister Smith, has the story. All of the news discussed in this podcast can be found at cluecho.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>